Hello, my name is Don and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about all of my precision bolt action 22s, what I like, what I don't like, and the new ones that are on the way. So stay tuned. When I first started the channel, I started out with this Varmint Precision Trainer. I also had the Ruger RPR. I had one Ruger 1022 that was tricked out and one that wasn't. Uh, so through this last eight, nine months that I've been doing YouTube, uh, I've bought several different rifles and there's things I like about them and things that I don't. So I thought that I would uh, go over each rifle, show you what I like, what I don't, and why I uh, did some of the things that I did, the changes that I made, and how I tricked them out. So, so we're going to start off with this Varmint Precision Trainer. So there was a lot to like about this rifle when I ordered it. Uh, I loved the looks of the stock. Um, it was the more expensive uh, model that we had available in the USA. Uh, and it's just a, a damn good looking rifle. Uh, but after I got it and I started shooting it, I did notice that it had some shortcomings. And when I say shortcomings, I mean the barrel. The barrel was short, 16 inches. Uh, that's not the length of a barrel that they should have on a trainer rifle. That should have at least a 20 inch barrel on it. The other thing that I didn't really like was the location of the vertical grip. Uh, for me, it's a little too far back. So that kind of led to me making some changes. Uh, and we'll talk about those changes on the next rifle that we're gonna talk about. But this rifle right now, I have it set up. I have a Area 419 rail on the front here. I have a MDT ground pod on it. It has the uh, straight Timony trigger in it. This is the one that's eight ounces. I think it's a 12 ounce weight, actually. I have the, uh, this is the Vortex Venom scope in MRAD. And uh, I've got it set up with the uh, 22 mag, 24 inch 22 mag um, barrel on it. And I really like having a 22 mag. The only thing that disappoints me about the 22 mag is it doesn't shoot the 40 grain or the 50 grain bullets for crap. I mean, it, it, <laughs> it's horrible. The 30 grain bullets, it shoots all of them really well under MOA but the 40 and the 50, forget it. I mean, it's just, in, and that's the kind of, that's the weight that you need to uh, hunt like coyotes with. Uh, they are always saying, you know, you gotta have the, uh, the heavier weight bullet for penetration. So I'm kind of disappointed about that. I kind of wish I would have went with the heavy barrel, uh, but too late now, this is what I got and that's what we're gonna end up with. So, but all, all in all, the way it's set up, uh, I like it just fine and uh, let's go to the next rifle. So the next rifle we're gonna go over is the uh, CZ457 open gun. Now in the NRL 22, if you were to shoot this rifle, you would definitely be qualified for uh, open class. Now this has the 21 inch uh, Elijah barrel. It has the MDT XRS chassis on it. I've got some dog bone weights on the front. This has the heavy Area 419 Arca rail. It has the wide body AccuTac bipod and the, I think this is the one to two pound straight Timony trigger. Uh, guys, if you don't have a Timony trigger in your CZ457, I highly recommend it. Now, I know the stock trigger is good if you put a Yo Dave trigger in it, trigger spring in it, but uh, man, these things are so crisp. It's hard to beat the Timony trigger. Now with the CZ457, uh, the nice thing about these things is, you know, the, the action is so good in these. And you, once you get some rounds on them, they're really hard to beat for the money. Uh, this thing will shoot point sixes with uh, Ely Saber all day long uh, with the lot that I've lot tested. Uh, it shoots great. I can't tell you anything that I don't like about this. And that's the nice thing about building a rifle. You build it the way you want it so that, you know, it. you've removed all the shortcomings. So, it, you know, it's everything that you'd want in a rifle and nothing that you don't. So let's go to the next rifle. So the next rifle I want to talk about here is my CZ457 Varmint MTR. Now guys, if I would have bought this rifle first, I would not have ended up with the other two. This rifle has everything that you want and really nothing that you don't. It's got the 20 inch barrel. It's got a great trigger in it. You can get this thing adjusted down to about 1.2 pounds. Uh, it's got a great action. Um, this thing is just set up the way you want it 
for a competition or a target rifle. It's just, it's awesome. Uh, there's nothing I don't like about this. I love the beautiful wood stock, uh, and I love the laser engraving that they did on this. It's, it's just gorgeous. Now this one, we do have a, uh, what is this thing, an Arkin SH4. And the reason I went with this scope is because uh, I'm going to be shooting this in factory class NRL 22, and you got to keep it under $1,200. And believe it or not, you can shoot the SH4 Arkin and this uh, rifle, the, the MTR, in factory class it gets you down i think about 1150 bucks so you know you really can't beat this setup for competing in nrl 22 factory class uh, like i said guys there's nothing i don't like about this thing the only thing that i really added to this was the uh, area 419 uh, longer rail this is the 14 inch rail with the built-in barricade stop and the victor company cheek rest and other than that uh, this rifle is perfect and like I said, had I bought this rifle first, I would not have ended up with the other two. Um, this barrel is quite accurate. And dare I say, it's almost as accurate as my Elijah barrel, almost. If anybody is looking for a new 22 precision rifle, buy one of these, uh, if you can find one. Uh, they're that good that you can hardly ever find them. Uh, it took me about six months to get a hold of this gun uh, I got it from grabagun.com and uh, they finally called me and let me knew, know that they had one in stock. So uh, I snatched it up right away. And this is the newest rifle that I have on the channel at this point. So let's go to the next rifle. So the next rifle I want to talk about is my Ruger RPR. Now I've put a lot of money into this trying to get it up to a certain level. And it does get to that point sometimes, but then a lot of times uh, it lets me down. And that has a lot to do with the magazines that, uh, you know, the 1022 magazine is not the type of magazine that you should use on a bolt gun that you would consider a precision rifle. Uh, there's just too much uh, upward pressure being put on them rounds. And you can feel it when you're racking around into the chamber, you can feel when you push that bolt forward, the round that you're putting into the chamber is actually damaging the round that's beneath it it'll put a big crease in the case and it'll put a big crease in the bullet too and i don't know how a bullet i actually i don't know how this is as accurate as it is when you look at the damage that gets done to these bullets before they even get into the chamber is unbelievable and yet they still shoot pretty decent uh, now this particular rifle has a shaw barrel 18 inch shaw barrel i've got the uh what is this this is a kid muzzle brake i've got the uh, arca rail that's made for the rpr I forget the manufacturer uh, we're running another arkin sh4 on here with an arkin mount we have the timony two-stage trigger in here i wish this was a single stage but they didn't make one at the time and i think trigger tech's coming out with a trigger for this also which will be awesome um, the nice thing about this rifle is this chassis is so uh, adjustable so you can make this fit a little kid and, and a large man. And this is probably the most adjustable out of the box precision 22 that you can buy. Um, and the reason I went with the SH4 on this rifle uh, and all these other rifles, I've got four of them. Uh, when you're outfitting this many rifles, I've got 12 rifles on the channel and I can't put good, good glass on every one of them. So. That's pretty much this rifle. Like I said, uh, I got a love hate with this thing. Uh, I wish uh, Ruger would come out with a, develop a new magazine that is more like what uh, Bagheera and CZ uses with uh, very light pressure coming from the bottom and uh, you know, a single stack uh, pistol style magazine uh, would do this platform wonder. So, so the next rifle I want to talk about is my Bagheera B14R. Uh, now, I've been hearing a lot of people complaining about this rifle, something about having extraction issues. I've never had a problem with this rifle at all. I had it. Uh, it's very accurate. It, it cycles every time. Uh, it's got a really, really nice action. I mean, it's mine is really smooth. You know, a lot, I know a lot of people have had, you know, rough actions or, you know, uh, different problems with the actions cycling hard and then clo the bolt closing hard. I've never had an issue with this thing. Uh, it's been 
Now, uh, I bought this as a barreled action, and then I put it in this Element chassis uh, from XL, XLR. Yes, XLR Element. Uh, I have the XR, XLR weights on it. I do have a bunch of weights built into the chassis too. So this rifle balances out really good. Uh, I've got a little pad on my, uh, my cheek rest here, and then I have the uh, MDT larger vertical grip. I love this grip. I have this on several of my rifles, uh, a couple of my 1022s also. This has a Trigger Tech Diamond trigger in it. We're running the EP5 Arkin uh, scope on here in a Arkin mount. Uh, the EP5 is a very good scope for the money. Again, I built this rifle, so this rifle has everything that I wanted, so there really isn't anything I don't like about this rifle. Like I said, it's always been 100% for me, and uh, I built it the way I wanted it, so it's, it's actually perfect the way it is. So I really have no complaints. Let's go to the next rifle. So last but not least is the Tika T1X. Now, this rifle we can talk about for a few minutes. Uh, I've never had any problems with this uh, as far as accuracy goes, and I know a lot of people have gotten these rifles and they didn't shoot for them. I haven't had that problem. This thing has been 100% as far as shooting. It's very, very accurate. I believe the SK long range, I was getting a .73 average at 100 yards. You can't ask for more than that, in my opinion, uh, not out of a $500 rifle. My biggest complaint about this rifle is these magazines. These things are horrible. Uh, I've had nothing but trouble with these magazines, and I've had problems with the ejector on this rifle too. Uh, this is the Gen 2 uh, version also, and I'm still having ejection issues. Honestly, I think it's in the magazine myself. Area 419 Arca rail on the front. Now I went with the uh, vertical grip, so I'll, the other things that I had to buy, so I bought the rifle, I think it was 500 bucks, and then I had to buy uh, the grip for it. I had to buy the cheek piece for it. I had to buy the uh, beaver tailed forend for it. I bought this to be my factory NRL 22 rifle and uh, I just can't depend on it. It's just not 100% uh, reliable. It's just not. Uh, I have extraction issues. I cannot put extensions on these magazines. I had two extensions on here. I've tried three different kinds and every one of the extensions has actually blown up on me. So <laughs> I was shooting the rifle and I go to rack around in it and the bottom falls out of it. The spring goes flying, the follower goes flying. Took me forever to find the follower. I was actually surprised I did. Uh, but yeah, the, you actually have to glue those uh, extensions on these. And uh, then, you know, you gotta pretty much damage the magazine to take it apart. And I'm just not gonna do that. I'll keep the rifle around for the, uh, for the channel, but I don't think it's reliable enough to compete with. But, uh, but uh, yeah, that's this rifle. So I do have a Bagheera BMR coming in. I also have a Savage Mark II TRRSR coming in. I'm also hoping to put my hands on a Henry Lever Action 22. So we do got some good stuff coming up on the channel, guys. But if you do have any ideas for some videos on the equipment that I already have, leave a message down in the comments and uh, I'll see what I can do about that. But uh, let's go to the final thoughts of the video. So out of all the rifles that I have bought, I think that this was the best buy for the money. Uh, by the time you put a scope mount and a cheek rest on this, you're going to be close to $1,000, but you're going to get a good shooting rifle. Now this rifle shoots almost as good as my CZ457 open rig that I have probably twice as much money into. Uh, it's funny, you live and you learn, you know, uh, I bought uh, the most expensive CZ that I could and I ended up modding it where I could have just went into buying this uh, rifle and being perfectly happy with it. But you don't know until you buy them and you try them. You know, it's, that's the thing with buying guns. That's just the way it is. Uh, but guys, that's all I got for you today. If you like what you saw, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you like what I'm doing here, go down there and smash that subscribe button. I can't build this channel without you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.